Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about the four last things. Death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Heaven and hell are different in the sense that one is full of good things and the other isn't. So the question is, what are good things? What makes a thing good? This is a subject I've wrestled with for a very long time, but eventually I started reading philosophy and theology, and the best answer I've ever heard is this one. Good things are things which are not evil in and of themselves. The best good things are things which are desirable for their own sake. This is important since God is the source and true nature of all goodness. He is desirable for his own sake, and some would argue it's hard to picture anything else that fits that bill. Still, the goodness of God is largely unknown to us here, except in an abstract sense, and if we can't visualize it, we can't fully appreciate it. What kinds of good things is God the source and true nature of? What falls into that larger category of things that aren't evil in and of themselves? Some things are obvious. Prayer isn't evil. Charitable actions aren't evil. Imagination isn't evil. Songs aren't evil. Pencils, trees, mountains, oceans, animals, plants, stars, planets, microorganisms, people, and so on. None of them are evil in and of themselves. On top of all this, there are lots of other examples of things that aren't evil in and of themselves, even though they may be the source of temptation for us in this life. For example, money isn't evil. Resources aren't evil. Popularity isn't evil. Culture isn't evil. Creative expression, alcoholic beverages, cigars, drugs, rock and roll music, heavy metal, video games, TV shows, movies, texting, etc., 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 in short, many things that give people pleasure aren't evil in and of themselves. Therefore, it follows that God is the source and true nature of these goodnesses as well. So, why do you hear so many Christians railing against these things if they're not evil? Well, the truth is that even when something isn't evil, it can still lead people to temptation. Popularity isn't evil, but if you put that first in your life, you'll be led astray and forget the will of God. Video games aren't evil, but if you put them first in your life, you'll never get anything accomplished. Wealth isn't evil, but if you put that first, you'll end up doing a lot of underhanded and evil things to acquire more of it. I think some Christians go way overboard in their condemnation of these secondary temptations, acting as though each is the root cause of some evil. In fact, literally that's not the case. The cause of evil isn't these things, but rather human free will. Texting may serve to distract us, but it's really our choice to let it do so. Money may tempt us to do evil deeds, but only because we let it. Even someone like Ebenezer Scrooge can use his money for good rather than being stingy and greedy. It all depends on what choices you make. We can't shift the blame to temptations as Eve did of the serpent in the Garden of Eden. We have to take responsibility for our own decisions. These kinds of scapegoats don't work any better now than they did then. In any case, this understanding of what a good thing is can help us to determine what it's like to be in the presence of God and what kinds of pearls of great price we can expect to find there. Even things which are only appreciable by some people and not others still wouldn't be evil and would still be present in heaven as a general rule of thumb. However, there's one more thing to consider in this regard. Sometimes we may think we want something when really what we want is something completely different. In the Twilight Zone episode, A Nice Place to Visit, robber Henry Valentine demands that the mysterious Pip hand over his wallet, to which Pip replies that really what Valentine wants isn't a wallet, it's money. Sometimes our desires can be the same way. We think we want one thing, but really we want another related thing instead. In fact, honestly, very few of us care about money either. We really want the security, respect, material comforts, and so on that wealth can give us. But if we had those things, most of us could probably do without so much as a penny. In the same way, many of the good things that we think we want most in this life will probably be closer to the outer perimeter of heaven, while the things we really want will be further in. Just something to think about. Next time, what is hell? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.